cam table overflow attack, and more importantly, how to prevent or protect against it. In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at what exactly is a cam table overflow attack against a switch and why somebody would do it. We'll demonstrate one in action, and then I'll walk you through step by step the exact details of how to protect or mitigate against that specific attack. Let's jump in. To understand a cam table overflow attack, let's take a brief reminder about how switching operates. The switch looks at every frame that enters the network and it memorizes the source MAC addresses. Why? So that in future frames that come in, if a frame comes in from laptop A and needs to go to laptop B, the switch takes it, forwards it on the back plane of the switch and puts it right at that port. All the other ports don't get to see those frames. Well, if the eavesdropper here, if he wants to see every single frame, how can he pull that off? Well, what we can do is leverage something called the content addressable memory space on a switch. Switches only can memorize so many MAC addresses, maybe 3,000 or 4,000 or higher, depending on the switch. But they certainly can't memorize 100,000 or 150,000. So here's the attack. If, a, if the PC wanted to launch an attack, he could send hundreds of thousands of frames, all with random and bogus source MAC addresses into the switch. The switch, in a frantic attempt to try to remember all of them, is going to fill up all the memory it has in its content addressable memory space. And then, when it has no more room, it's going to not be able to remember the real MAC addresses of laptop A and laptop B. We leave the attack running, and the switch, now as it gets frames from laptop A going to laptop B, it says, oh, I don't know where laptop B lives anymore. I don't have that in my content addressable memory because I have all these bogus MAC addresses. I will go ahead and forward that frame to every other port. So what happens is now laptop A's frame not only goes to this port, but to all other active ports in that same VLAN. So now the attacker can eavesdrop. That's the goal of a cam table overflow attack. So before we upset the apple cart, let's just go take a look and make sure that our switches are in good shape. I have three switches. They're all trunked together. And the MAC addresses that show up on one switch from a client, if those frames go through the trunk, those same MAC addresses will show up on the other switches as well. So on switch one, let's take a quick peek and just see how many MAC addresses, additional MAC addresses, this switch could memorize. And it says 3,044 more. It knows about five MAC addresses on VLAN 1, and that's it. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at switch two just as a, a, a baseline of where we're at. So we have 5,082 more available that can be stored on switch two. Fantastic. Let's go launch an attack. I've got a machine. It's connected to port seven on switch number one, but the switches are all trunked together. I'm going to run a little utility called MACOF. I'll get some help for it here. And I'm going to specify the interface I want to use. I'm going to let it choose random numbers for everything else. And what this is going to do is going to spit out tens of thousands of frames, all sourced from random bogus MAC addresses with no intent of getting anything back, and I am just totally saturating the switch. Now, this is on a closed track. I'm on my own little lab network. This is not on a production network. Again, we want to be aware. We don't want to attack anybody. If you want to practice, you need to do it on a closed track on your own equipment, not harming anyone. So let's go back to switch one or two. Either way is going to be in way, way hurting. Here's the MAC address table count for switch two. And it says, well, I'm maxed. <laughs> I've got 5,083 that I've learned on VLAN three, and it's done. And I actually be good to switch three as well. And we can probably, yeah, he can do 5,084 that on VLAN three, and he's done. So right now, any new devices that come on the network, anybody who's sending frames, the switch is going to say, I have no idea where you live because of all these new MAC addresses that I'm sorting through. It's going to be sent to everyone. Now we're a candidate for an eavesdropping attack. Let me stop the actual attack from happening. And let me walk you through now how we can protect it. So in our journey, we wanted to identify, first of all, what is a cam table overflow attack? It's where you basically send more MAC addresses than the switch can remember. And as a result, valid hosts, the switch doesn't know where they live, and can st it can start flooding to all of their ports for the purpose of eavesdropping. And that's primarily why it's done. Another side effect is that your switch may go belly up if it doesn't handle it very well. And that would be a denial of service attack, which is also a possible option. So what are the countermeasures to take? They are so simple. Oh my goodness. Just don't power on your switch. Leave it powered off and you won't have any cam table <laughs> overflow attacks. But seriously, if you want to leave the switch up and you want to protect against it, what do you do? And the answer is we're going to use port security. 
Port security simply tells each of the ports that you configure it on, listen, Mr. Port, I want you to only memorize up to one MAC address or up to five MAC addresses. Sometimes people may need two or three MAC addresses. That's okay for virtual machines and other purposes. But if we tell each switch port that five is the max, and if it goes beyond five to shut down the port, that would solve the problem of a cam table overflow attack. And there's lots of bells and whistles, lots of nerd knobs that we can tweak, but that's the whole key of port security is to tell the switch not to learn so many MAC addresses on each individual port, and that way we can limit a cam table overflow. To implement it, it's a piece of cake. Let's bring in the switch and do that right now. We're going to focus on port gig 0 slash 7 because that's where my offending machine is coming in. And it's really simple to configure port security. We're going to go into interface configuration mode. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply shut down the port and bring it back up. That's just to flush out all the MAC addresses that were learned on that port. Also, port security does require the port to be administratively configured as an access port. So I'm going to configure it as an access port so that port security will work. Second thing I want to do, I want to set the maximum number of MAC addresses to five. The default is one. I've got a couple other things going on with virtual machines and other tools. So I'm going to set it to five. And then what most people forget to do is enable the feature itself with the switch port port security command with no options. Once it's enabled, we should verify that with the command do show port security. The do, of course, is done because I'm in configuration mode. The command from privilege mode would just be show port security. And this says that I've got gig 07 that has port security configured. The maximum MAC addresses is five. Let me bring this over a little bit more so we can see it. It's also showing the current MAC addresses is zero. And the action, if we are, do a security violation, is to go ahead and shut down. So let me go ahead and exit out of configuration mode. And let's go back and launch the attack one more time. And this time we should have much different results. So we'll run Mac off one more time. If you'll notice, my icon up here changed on switch one, indicating that I have console information. So then came to the screen. I'm going to stop this because it, the attack's not succeeding because the port is currently shut down. So if we go back to switch one. We have a console message saying that security, port security violation, and G07 is in error disabled state because of port security violation. Now we can see that information with the command that we ran earlier, which is show port security. And that's going to show us the details about what's currently happening with that port. So it says, oh, yep, current security violation count is one. Now, if we brought it back up and it came back down again and up and down and up and down, it, that violation count would increase and increase and increase. So currently we have a violation on that. If we wanted to see the details about all the ports that were currently in error disabled state, we could do so by issuing this command, show interface status, those that are error disabled, and it would give us that detail. And there we go, G07 error disabled because of a port security violation. So in this micro nugget, we've taken a look at what is a cam table overflow attack when we flood so many MAC addresses, the switch can't keep it straight anymore where people live because there's just too much volume. Why is it done? So we can eavesdrop on all the traffic, which otherwise we wouldn't normally see. And the countermeasure to take is to use port security to limit the number of MAC addresses that the switch is willing to learn on a port before it takes a countermeasure. I've had a lot of fun. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.